You got profit down year on year. You got revenue down, iPhones down, and a trillion dollar market cap. Investors clearly are learning how to value this company in a different way. Well, I think, I think investors are, are seeing that, uh, that uh, Apple is now in position to exploit its install base. Um, your correspondent was talking about services. Services is the only growing part of the company with, with wearables but on a smaller basis. Uh, they have about 390 million subscribers already on, the, on their various subscribers for services, music, pay, cloud, and so on. Uh, it's considerably uh, higher than most other subscription services, like Netflix, for instance, which is at 140. So the, the stickiness now of the platform is going to be really proven by the services. And uh, they've announced games, they've announced news, or news is already launched. Uh, they announced a streaming video service. Uh, they're going to be very, very compelling in that field. Huh. David, I wonder, you know, we, we talk about companies making generational changes all the time, whether it's when Facebook went to mobile and now they're going to uh, the future is private. Moving to a services-based model is huge. Yeah, I agree. I think the movement to services finally really, you know, um, extracting the true value of the uh, success of iPhone. I, and there's certainly a bright spot with Apple Watch and the health tech coming around. But, you know, when you look at this, you know, uh, China, which is the second single largest country market, um, you know, the services does not look great for Apple there. You know, uh, Apple News is blocked. Apple Pay has no chance with WeChat Pay, Alipay. Uh, Apple Music is not even in the top five. And just like Netflix, uh, most likely Apple's content is going to be blocked on the video side. So, you know, I think um, it looks fairly bleak uh, in terms of uh, the international expansion of the services side. Krish, you've got a buy rating on Apple, price target raised to $245 a share. You say the services story is at an inflection point. We're still waiting on some of these actual new uh, streaming services specifically to launch later in the year. Why do you think it's an inflection point now? Sure, absolutely. So to your point, Morgan, you know, services has been growing. One of the things I'd highlight is that you have a couple of ones coming up, right? The arcade launch in summer and then the Apple TV Plus sometime in fall of this year. We'll find out the pricing structure when it happens. But what is interesting is, to your point, they do have a very loyal customer base. And in, a, in another way, the services opportunity is effectively monetizing more with your customers that are loyal to you. And we do think that once some of these uh, products, or I should say services like uh, Apple TV Plus, start flowing through the numbers, both on the revenue side and the profit dollar side, I think you're going to see a nice inflection. Uh, one of the things I'd highlight is that you know people always tend to underestimate many of these numbers when we come in. And then as the company starts growing, we realize, oh, these are like really big, impressive numbers. Wearables mm -hmm. is a great example. You know, five plus billion dollars is not uh, it's small for Apple from a revenue standpoint, but it's a pretty impressive number from a pure dollar figure. You know, Eric, we tend to talk about the services business in terms of Apple being able to really milk the customer base and get more profit dollars out of them. And that's good, but I wonder if the real story might end up being keeping people in the cycle so that when they finally do release that 5G iPhone, uh, then you see another iPhone unit pop and all that profit dwarfs everything we see from services from now until then. Is this really about that next 5G iPhone even more than it is about the services dollars? Well, I think you're right that, that keeping people happy and, and involved even though there's no major leap in uh, iPhone technology until 5G perhaps is really, really important. Uh, but it also, I mean, shows you the strength of, of the, the whole ecosystem. And they're not the only ones playing the ecosystem game, right? Amazon has it with Prime. Uh, you know, Netflix is trying to keep you in their system with more and more great content. So every, uh, Disney is going to get into the act now with, uh, with their streaming service and their incredible library of, of content. So everybody is trying to keep people in their ecosystem. In the case of Apple, as you point out, uh, you know, the, 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 the next generation of phones, the 5G phones, will be a huge, huge bonanza for them. Uh, David, your point about uh, China being a bit of a, an obstacle, is this sort of, in your view, state-supported resistance to uh, the Apple brand? Is it just uh, competitive uh, reactions from rivals? And how do they unlock that China puzzle? Well, you know, fundamentally, uh, you know, areas of news, uh, financial services, uh, TV content, 
those are all traditional areas that China has always blocked. Um, whereas, you know, hardware, you can sell hardware, um, you know, anywhere in the world. Whereas, you know, when you get into some of these services, again, touching finance, touching news, touching important content, Apple's not going to be able to expand on the services side in the global, um, you know, many countries that are very sensitive to foreign um, players coming into those spaces. And so I think, you know, in the U.S., it might look great, but on an international basis, you know, it's a little bit more bleak. Um, you know, what could Apple do? Um, I think Apple could work with uh, the Chinese government um, to get permission on certain kinds of content, certain kinds of services. But, you know, so far it's all talk, uh, no action. Yeah, Eric, just to dig into that a little bit more, I mean, is Apple actually spending enough on content right now, especially when you see the big cash pilot sitting on and another $75 billion worth of share buyback authorizations? Well, in terms of, of video streaming, so we'll have to see exactly what they're going to announce. But you're right, they haven't really, they haven't really spent a lot of money in news. Uh, they're basically aggregating content from uh, news producers, including CNBC, perhaps. And so, so uh, they are, if they really are going to be serious about streaming, they're going to have to spend, what, uh, you know, uh, $10 billion a year, like, like Netflix, may, maybe even more. Um, and that's, I, from my perspective, that's a worthy place for them to spend their, their cash pile. Um, uh, that, that marketplace is incredibly rich and will grow very fast. Chris, how much of this 6.5% move so far this morning is about the results and the guide? How much of it is about the buyback and the dividend raise? I would probably say uh, a large part of it is results driven. One of the things is that there was a certain expectation that numbers are going to be bad. You know, people have been speaking about a very weak iPhone uh, environment for a while. Numbers have to come down. So I think the expectations are pretty low into the print. And then on top of that, you have these like very impressive numbers where the company's iPhone numbers on the margin were slightly better, China was slightly better, and then you're seeing the services kind of blossoming into the next stage. So I do believe results do play a big part. $75 billion on the buyback, more than the dividend, I would say the buyback does help. You know, you add it with the existing $39 billion that's left, you have like $114 billion. And the rough run rate has been about $20 billion a quarter in terms of buyback. So I would say the buyback does help provide support, but I think the fundamental uh, results do kind of make help us turn the tide where some people who are negative into the stock kind of like, you know, move their shots, and then you're seeing some fundamental investors get in. Hey, Chris, really quick, uh, to Eric's point about content budget, what are you modeling in? What's the upside target to, to what they might spend, either on original or acquired uh, content? Sure, absolutely. I think, uh, you know, uh, to Eric's point, they haven't spent a whole lot. At some point, it's going to start coming in through. My expectation is sometime the back half of this year uh, and into sometime next year, you're going to see like a lot more dollars going dropped into like original content or any kind of content for the services side. One thing I would also argue is that, you know, in the last quarter, they did about 63.8% gross margin. But keep in mind, as the content starts coming in, your revenue from services is going to increase. So with the gross profit dollar, but you might see some kind of gross margin percentage come down because some of these have had to go through the COGS line uh, as they spend. So what I would say is that the shift is going to happen once original content comes in where people are going to start focusing on revenue and gross profit dollar versus just the percentage of gross margin.